Well, thank you very much, Paul Miller. Weather is brought to you by Freedom Ford. Freedom Ford with locations in Wise, Lebanon, Claypool Hill, and Freedom Ford Honda in Ivel, Kentucky. There's nothing like freedom. Nothing, not a no way, no how, nothing, not anything like freedom. The Morning Drive, 93.5 WAXM with Nick and Ashley, 804, temperature of 57. Clear conditions on this Tuesday, the 26th day of June. Great things in store this hour. We're going to take a look at celebrity news and gossip, the latest DVD and CD releases, and special in-studio guests. Also, five-star country lined up for you. Who do we have this hour? Well, Keith Urban. We're also going to hear from Lady Antebellum and what about Bradley Gilbert as well. Let's get it started. Here's Carrie Underwood and Good Girl. It's Nick and Ashley, The Morning Drive, 93.5 WAXM. <clears throat> so like I said, um, you know, you always, uh, you know, like the, the kids are way more, I know my kids have, um, you know, sometimes people play it off when their kid comes up to them and says, Mommy, there's something in my bedroom. They'll say, oh, you're, you know, you just watched a bad movie or something. I mean, people really know that. They need to consider that. I mean, and they don't. A lot of people don't. They just write it off as <laughs> they ain't seeing nothing, you know. And then the kids start believing, no, I'm not seeing anything. So that cuts off that um, to their brain, you know, because they are a sensory for that. And that's why you have mediums. You have sensitive. They are... They can hear. I mean, you know, they're more open to seeing and hearing things. What about like, you know, people who play with a Ouija board? Uh, no, oh. we are against that. That bring that can bring in a day. That opens up doors you don't want to. Yeah. They, and trust me, I've done it before. When I was younger, not no one being stupid. I've never, never, I've never had bad experience. Uh, well, I've had bad experience with Ouija boards. That is not something we can down, and that's something we say on our videos because we've had an idiot on the graveyard. We had like the Ouija yeah, board. That's we had a, it's somebody. That's a doorway. He's going to the cemetery with the Ouija board trying to talk to their father. Yeah, and we that's a no, big no-no. No. If your dad's going to talk to you, he's going to come to you, you know. Demons can impersonate. Yeah, right. exactly. You, might think you know, some people can write, I mean, you know, if they was a true possession, it could be brought off as somebody being um, crazy, you know what I'm saying? Just like some of these movies you see. I mean, there's truth behind it. I was trying to look at it. Do you know it's, and it's the, um, against the law of Virginia to um, do an exorcism? No, I don't believe it. I mean, so I'm like, it's it's my guys. <laughs> <laughs> But with uh, you know at every investigation we go into, um, you know we try to get a lot of information about it. If we do go in, we do have uh, you know depending on our um, religion, we have blessings. We say our own individual prayers or blessings before we go into a case. Yeah, but just because you know going into that, <laughs> and we do have uh, one of our investigators. He's an investigator in training because he's one of our uh, investigators' sons. So we let him tag along to the ones that we know. Because he's a kid, and you know he's more open to stuff like that. Even bad spirits, you know, they can mock things. I was talking about like, pregnant women all too, like they're they get they And then you always see the animals, animals. It's the hormones. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it opens the whole. Okay, thirty seconds. You put it between you all and then you can okay. talk in it. Mm -hmm. How close should I be? Huh? How close do you need to be up to it? <laughs> I'll, I'll, if there's a problem, I'll Okay. Mm -hmm. Carrie Underwood and Good Girl here on the Morning Drive on 93.5 WAXM with Ashley and Nick. It's 8.08. Our temperature is 57 and we have clear conditions on a Tuesday. All right, we are joined in studio by some very special guests this morning. That's right, members of the Black Mountain Paranormal Society. They came last week and investigated our building here in downtown Northern Virginia on Park Avenue, and we can't wait to hear what they found. You know what I thought you were going to say? I thought you were going to channel Bill Murray from Ghostbusters for a moment and say, we came, we saw, we kicked it. <laughs> <laughs> so, good morning, gentlemen and ladies. Good morning. Good morning. So let's talk about um, what, first off, let's do this. There have been so many rumors and stories around this building. There have been, you know, and again, you can call it an urban legend if you want to. Uh, and that's how things get started. 
uh, there have been people, there was supposed to have been a man who was killed here. Uh, there's supposed to be a, a man who's still here who doesn't want to leave. So that's kind of the, the basic story of what happened. So let's talk about what you guys came in and, and did. You got things set up and we'll go from there. Yeah, we come in, we've done our investigation, preliminary investigation. Uh, we do have Wong on the team, he's a sensitive. Um, he comes in, he um, goes around the building, gets a feel for the building, and um, we have our digital firms, we get um, just a flat line reading for everything, and then we go into our investigation. And uh, we talk to Paul, he gave us a bunch of information, the history of the building. Um, well, Paul gave someone a whole lot of information. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was very useful. <laughs> Absolutely. He was very excited about this. Um, with uh, going in, our sensitive upstairs had a lot of, um, felt like something was here in the building. Now, let me stop you just a moment. You were sensitive. Yes. Kind of explain that just for a moment. You were sensitive. Yes. Uh, he's a sensitive. He is more open to more spiritual um, beings, ghosts, or... Um, Entities. Yes. And he uh, also not only does that, he picks up on the living too. Um, Paul even, uh, he has a lot of back pains, a lot of knee pains. Um, he confirmed to him where his pain was coming from just so he could say, hey, I am sensitive and th I, it does work, you know, because a lot of people don't believe and he sure showed us. Now let me ask you something. This sensitive, mm -hmm. could I take him to Vegas? and get some odds on the Super Bowl and the World <laughs> Series and what, can sure you do that? <laughs> I'm sure you probably could eventually, oh. but it all comes back. It's all about Exactly. You know, <laughs> the karma that he can gain here. No, no, I'm just kidding. I'm, 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 <laughs> but anyway, so you guys come in and you, you got your equipment set up and you had your sensitive go through and see if uh, he felt anything in particular. Right. Uh, any hot spots, so to speak. Yeah. So let's continue from there. Okay, well, he was upstairs, definitely felt something upstairs. And Paul had told us that a lady had come up there um, earlier, I don't know, years ago. Um, and she felt that um, it was just not good up there. She wouldn't go down the hallway, and she claimed to be a sensitive, too. Um, upon that, we set up our videos, um, done our EVPs. We didn't get any... Now, let me stop you. <laughs> EVP, Electronic Voice Phenomenon. Um, yes. Okay. That Which was made that. famous in the movie White Noise that starred Michael Keaton. Right, yeah. exactly. It was famous before that, but nobody really knew it. That's right. what made it. Right. <laughs> okay, and we done EVPs um, with, with a digital voice recorder. We go through, uh, examine, go over that very thorough. Nothing on that, but we did have a picture of an orb on the stage in the Opry House. Okay, now what, for people who are listening and who do not know what an orb is, Explain what an orb is, basically. Okay, an orb is the residual um, of a ghost trying to manifest. Um, maybe they can't. Maybe they, there's not enough energy to manifest. Even on the stage, we had one of our investigators, Matt, sitting on the stage. He felt like he was drained. So, you know, that could have been a ghost trying to get some of his energy just to so we could see it. And Chris has felt the same thing in the same spot as Matt. And right. He, Chris, what, he got up and then you sat down and felt the same exact same. Right? Yeah, yeah. He he sat down first and uh, said he felt real heaviness on him, you know, and just felt really weak. And uh, I sat in the same spot that he did and uh, sat there and it felt like just every bit of my energy had just drained and it just felt like something real heavy on my chest. It's hard to breathe. And once I moved away from that spot, you know, it was just still kind of felt kind of droggy from from sitting there I guess but uh, once we moved away from that certain spot you know it's nothing. Let's go back to the term manifestation. How does a spirit do that? Now I have read articles about this because this does interest me. It really does. Um, the word ectoplasm. Now we've heard that in the movie Ghostbusters and that's what Slimer, a little green ghost, was supposed to have left traces of. But ectoplasm is actually a technical term, is it not? Yes, it is. Ectoplasm. Um, actually, I have um, definitions and references right here for you. Um, we can go here and the ectoplasm is just like um, the residue. You know, if it's hard to explain. <laughs> it's very hard to explain. We actually have on our website a picture of 
at ecoplasm org and they can visit our website uh, we can get that up to them as soon as possible but it was, it was on his face so it's pretty interesting come in Oh, we go along with it. We think it's funny. I want to hear more. Now, Matt, actually, you had some more experiences in the back, did you not? Yeah. Uh, when we first got here, uh, me and Chris went upstairs um, to start the investigation down the hallway. And um, I heard some footsteps coming up the stairs, you know, four or five thumps like something was walking up the steps. And then I saw a shadow sort of move like it was going down the steps. And immediately, me and Chris went over to check it out to make sure nobody had come in. Uh, and we checked the apartment that's up there to make sure nobody was in there. And uh, we couldn't find anybody. And um, not long after that, we went back to where we was at at the end of the hallway. And Chris felt a cold spot sort of near him. And uh, he told me to come over. Uh, I went over, and you could f actually feel probably like around his waist up to his chest. It was definitely a change in temperature. It was cool. And it was really hot up yeah. there anyway. Yeah, it was really hot upstairs. <laughs> well, that's another but, uh, thing, too. When you guys go in to do an investigation, you ask that heat pumps be turned off because cold air can give you guys false readings with your yes. equipment. Right, and we also ask them to take any animals out of the household or a business, whatever we're doing, because we've had an incident where um, we done a home case over in Clinchco, and we've got um, a cat meowing as an EVP, and believe it or not, there was no cat in that house. <laughs> oh, wow. No, wow. there wasn't. And now you had an experience as well. Did you tell us about that when you were sitting on the balcony at the opera here? Yes, uh, me and Holly and Josh were sitting up there in the, in the back balcony to see if we could pick up on anything or get any EVPs and stuff. And I was just sitting there and I had the heaviness on my chest and it just felt like I couldn't breathe. And um, I had my blue jeans on it and I started feeling like a toe. It was just like a real sharp, hard pull. And then I, I felt it again. And I just, and then I didn't know what to think. And then I felt one more time. And then and I felt it on my, and the knee part of my blue jeans, I felt the same hard tug. And then it went along the, after that, but um, Polly's husband, JT, had looked up, and he said, who's standing up? And was like, nobody's standing up. And he had seen somebody behind us in the hallway enter the crow's nest back there. Never enough, never enough, no, I know it's never enough, never enough, no, I know it's never enough.